Good morning, everybody. Welcome to my coiling workshop. My name is Charlene, and today we're going to learn how to coil. Um, it's an ancient technique of basketry going back um, at least 10,000 years ago. So today we are going to learn, we can either make a coaster like this, it's a nice coaster, or you could choose to make a basket, like this, like a little basket. Um, so let's get started. First, what you're gonna need is some rope right here. And whatever you have at home is fine. Um, it's really good if you find something that's very bendy um, and still a little stiff so it holds its shape. And you'll also need a tapestry needle. So I don't know if you can see that. This is a tapestry needle. And you can get them, they often look like this package, like at Michael's or Joann's. And you just want to use the biggest one um, in the package um, that will fit whatever yarn you choose. So the eye of the needle um, fits the yarn. And you'll need some scissors. And you'll need some yarn. And whatever yarn makes you happy is perfect. Um, this is a really nice blend here of, I think it's wool and it's hand dyed. And I got this in a really cute shop. Um, in Cambria, actually, near Hearst Castle. There's a lovely little yarn shop there. Um, I love getting hand-dyed yarn. Um, yeah, and sometimes, <laughs> like, I even save the tag just to see what it is. This is actually a silk blend. Um, so be sure to pick something that feels good on your hands. So this is a combination, Manos del Ur Uruguay, it says it's from and it's 70% wool and 30% silk. But use whatever you have. That's, that's all about all we have is all we need right now. So let's get started and go ahead and ha take your rope and a good uh, amount to start is maybe three to five feet. Um, that's a good manageable size and you should get something about this big or a small bowl like I showed you earlier, one of these bowls, but it all depends on what, you know, the width and length of your rope is. Um, so the first thing we want to do is take your rope and go ahead, get your scissors and trim the tip of the rope, trim it off at a little angle here. Just take off the little bits here and my rope's a little fuzzy, that's okay. So just trim it, try to make it a little bit of an angle if you can. I don't know if you can see that. It's a little bit of an angle there. It's okay if it's not perfect. And then get your needle and then whatever yarn you've chosen and just get a good amount. I don't know, um, just maybe two feet, something like that. Just guesstimate is fine. Whatever is whatever you can work with and then take your yarn and your scissors and then you're gonna cut, cut that move that yarn away And then we're gonna go ahead and thread the needle I usually wet it a little bit and then Go ahead and thread that Okay, so we have our needle is threaded with the yarn. And then we're gonna go ahead and take the end of your rope. And then, so you have one side with the needle and threaded and then take the other end, the end that doesn't have the needle. Okay, and then you're gonna take the two ends we're gonna overlap them. So lay one side down, take in a nap, lay down, and then hold that tip end with one, with your pincher, your pointer and your thumb. And then we take 
the yarn and you're laying it down, what is that, about an inch down? So you're laying down about an inch and then you're going to leave about a quarter of an inch not covered, just leave their rope exposed and then you start to wrap upon itself. Okay, so let me show you that one more time. So you have about an inch here and you take about an inch of your yarn and lay it down. Let's take a nap, we're tired, take a nap. And then you're gonna hold it down and then start wrapping that tail down. You still have about a quarter of an inch left exposed. So start wrapping. Wrap, wrap, wrap. I like these different colors on this yarn, kind of like rainbow colors. And you keep wrapping until you can bend the rope upon itself. Because we want to make like a the base is like a tight coil. Can you see that? So the base is a like a little circle. So so what I just did so is about I guess it's about an inch or so. And then you're just going to turn it upon itself. And you're going to marry the two sides. So, so wrap, wrap, wrap the exposed side. And then I realize it's, all, it's okay to go back and like check it out. So maybe, I'd say maybe leave a little bit more. If I, if I could do it over again, I'd, but it'll be fine this way too. So you're going to wrap the two sides together, wrap, 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 wrap these two sides, keep wrapping, ooh, we've got purple now, so you have this shape, okay, everyone should have that shape, if not, if it pops out for whatever, whatever reason, just start over, no biggie, so you want to get to that point. And then you're going to bend it upon itself. So keep a little bit of the rope is showing you, just shimmy it over. And you know, this is the way I show you is how you cover all the rope, but you're welcome to do it your own way and have it more loose. And sometimes it's fun to show the rope, especially if it's like really pretty, um, or you just want to show the rope. Um, and if you know a little bit about weaving, so we call, we have two parts, warp and weft. So the warp is what you're weaving onto and the weft is your weaving. So we're gonna go ahead and once it's bent upon itself, you're going to take your needle and go up the middle. And I'll show you a little bit more about warp and weft in a minute, I just wanna get you going here. So you go up the middle and then you take that, tighten it and then you're going to wrap one, two, three, four. I'll do four. Let's say in when you're at this stage, I would wrap only three to four times. And then I go up the center, up, up the center, and then go around and then wrap one, two, three, four. And then we're going to go up the center. Okay. And then go around. One, two, three, four. And go up the center. And then go around. One, two, three, four. And then go up the center. And go around. One, two, three, four. Okay, 
a little piece of tape stuck on my finger, so I had to get that off. Then we go up the center. Okay. And one, two, three, four. And notice how when I wrap, I'm holding with one side, doesn't matter if you're left or right handed, but one side is holding the side with the tail, and the side you wrap is like the, the your work, your free side. So you can always switch that, say you're left handed, and you're holding it with your right handed, and you're wrapping with your left. And that's actually probably good for your brain to try that, like plasticity, even if it feels a little awkward. It might be good just to switch and try. I'm still using my right hand to go up the center, but it's good for your brain to try different things that feel a little bit uncomfortable. Kind of like when you um, sketch and instead of using your right hand, you use your left hand to stimulate the other side of your brain. It's the same with weaving. Okay, so look at there. I just finished that piece of yarn. So this is a good point to show you how to connect. So Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unravel just a little bit because it's better to connect right after you've already gone through the center. So here I just went through the center and then I'm going to wrap it around maybe one or two at the most. And I'll just leave it like that. Okay, just it'll, it'll hold its shape. You're fine there. And then get your yarn and then go ahead and unravel a little bit. Whatever feels comfortable. And then cut piece. And I'll take my needle. And I'm going to thread my needle. Okay. And then I've got my um, my work here and so I went around twice and then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna trim it because it's a little bit long I'm just gonna trim the yarn can you see that okay yeah I'm just trimming it Doot. and then lay it down it's tired it did its work it's gonna take a rest and then I'm gonna lay the new end the end that that is not threaded okay so one end has the needle, and we lay that down, and then the tail end we're going to put on our work. And we're going to lay that down pretty much even with the little, the old yarn. Okay, lay it down. These two are best buds. They're taking a nap. They're tired. And then you're going to go ahead, and we're going to wrap those two together. You get all cozy and wrapped up. One, two... I think I'm going to stop there because I'm trying to count four. So two plus two is four. And then I go up the center. Okay, and make it tight. And then go around. And then we go wrap one, two, three, four. And then we'll go ahead and see how I've completed the circle here. I went all the way in a circle. So it's actually like a cute little snail shell or something. You can imagine some crazy marine life snail with some wild colors. And then instead of going through the little hole, I'm going to go in the next section. Can you see that? I know it's a little dark. So here's the original hole we were going through, the very center. We're going to the next level, the next section, okay? So I'm going through the next section. And you might not be there exactly. If you still need to complete your circle, keep going in the center. That's just fine. So I'm, I'm on the next section, checking the back. Always good to check your back. There's a little bit of stuff sticking out there, so I'm just gonna trim that off now. I think that's some of the rope. Just trim that now. And then, just gonna keep doing what we're doing. So I'm gonna wrap 
One, two, three, four. And I'm covering up those two buddies that are taking a nap. Two little kitties, two little doggies, whatever you can imagine. And then we are continuing going up the next level or the next section, up and around, and then wrapping. One, two, three, four. And at this point, you're welcome to change the number of wraps as you see fit. If you don't feel like doing um, five or six, seven, usually I tend to go for odd numbers. I'm not sure why. Maybe odd numbers are more pleasing um, proportionally. It could be part of that uh, Fibonacci series and proportions if you um, you can look that up if you want to uh, I don't know if I can explain that very well but okay so I'm pretty happy with my little basket here I'm looking at the sides and the shape small I like that and I feel ready to end my basket so I'm going to show you how to end your basket um, first we're going to do is get a pair of sharp scissors um, I'm going to use, these are actually a basket, basket making scissors. Um, they're really sharp and they have good, um, good point, but whatever scissors you have is fine. And we're going to cut, we're going to taper the end of your rope right here. So I'm going to cut at an angle like that. So it's a bit of an angle there. Hope you can see that little angle. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going. Keep weaving until I get a little closer. One, two, three, four. Can, yeah, I'm still doing four. Get a little bit closer here. Actually, you know what, since hmm, I'm towards the end of my piece, and that's okay, I'm actually going to add on another piece so I don't run out, but it's going to be pretty short. So, to make it easier on myself, I'm just going to undo this and cut this and add on a little earlier. So I'll thread the needle, and we're going to add on, cut it even a little bit shorter than that. So again, when you add on, you go through the next row, and then you come up, and then wrap once, and then I'm actually going to switch hands here and show you the inside right here. And then I'm going to lay down the new one. And then you're going to wrap. It feels a little awkward because I'm actually switching hands. But that's good. It's good to try different things. So I'm wrapping that. I'm going to go ahead and secure that. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I think I'll do one more. Go around. I'm going to go around one, two, three times. And go in the next row. Okay, so I have this got this little bit left. It's okay if it gets a little frayed. We're just gonna cover it up and see. There's a little piece of rope sticking. I'm just gonna trim that now. 
There we go. And then all you do is instead of wrapping, you're just going to keep putting your needle through the next row over and over, side by side. So here's go in the next row here. See, so I have two in the next row and then a third in the next row. And you're just going to keep repeating that and hopefully your rope will be covered and not pop through. Keep repeating this. Covering that little frayed edge. It's okay if you have to go back. I'm going, I'm actually overlapping. See, I'm this little rope showing here. See a little bit of rope? And I'm going to go back and cover that up. I just, I, I prefer it all covered. Again, you don't have to do it this way. You want to show your rope more. And then I'm going to try to cover up these little frayed bits. You can also trim. I'm just going to cover it. Mm. Oops. And thread the needle. Cover up this frayed end. I'm actually going to go back here. Back here. I might actually trim some of that frayed bit. And then I notice there's still a little gap there, so I'm just going to go back again. And my needle keeps getting undone because it's getting short. So see, I'm taking the tail, the back end and I'm actually pushing the yarn through since it's getting a bit short. I'm just going to push that through and then grab it at the other end. Alright, that's, that's looking pretty good to me and I can shimmy things around and trim that little bit. And so I'm going to try to thread this one last time and then this little end I'm going to Go ahead and sew it through. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm sewing it through the next layer just to hide that tail. Stick it through here and bring it across. Okay? So that looks pretty good to me. Oops. And then, so we have that little bit here. And I'm just going to trim that that off as tight as I can. Okay, and then these little bits, you can um, use your needle and shimmy things over if it bothers you or tuck things in with whatever and works the best. I'm just gonna kind of tuck things in here. And use that side, tuck it in. And, you know, it doesn't really bother me. It's not perfectly covered because I'm happy with this basket. And I think it's a sweet little basket. And there you go. That's how you finish your basket. And you just coiled your first little basket. All right. Thank you for joining me. And I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did.